Hey there, and welcome to Family Church. We are a diverse, spirit-filled, life-giving church, healing hurts, building relationships, and developing leaders. My name is Pastor Josh, and I am so excited that you've connected to our page today. Be sure to grab a notebook, a pen, paper, your phone, however you want to take notes, and get ready for today's message. Let's jump right in. And it's Palm Sunday. Maybe you didn't know what Palm Sunday is. Why do we have palms? What's the historical reason behind this? We are going to look at that today. If you're wondering what to do with this palm branch cross after today, that's really up to you. Uh, a lot of people put them, like, magnet them to the refrigerator. Some people pin them up on the wall of their house. It's just a memorial to remember Holy Week, remember the, the, the path that Jesus walked leading up to the cross of Easter. Today is literally Palm Sunday. Today is the day that Jesus began his triumphal entry into Jerusalem to begin Holy Week. All right, we're gonna look at that today. But here's what you're gonna do with those palm branches. Throughout my message, that cross is gonna show up on the screen behind me. And when it does, what I want you to do is raise it up in the air and yell out, Hosanna. Okay? So we're going to try it out. All right? We're going to try it out. Here we go. We're going to talk today about Jesus' triumphal victory, triumphal entry. All right. We're going to try it one more time. We're going to try it one more time. Ready? Okay. We're ready upstairs. We're going to talk about Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem. Awesome, awesome, awesome. All right, if you have your Bibles, turn with me to Luke 19, 28. It will also be up on the screen behind me in both English and Espanol. When he had said this, Jesus, he went on ahead going up to Jerusalem. And it came to pass when he drew near to Bethpage and Bethany at the Mount, at the Mount called Olives, that he sent two of his disciples, saying, go into the village opposite you, where you will enter and you will find a colt tied on which no one has ever sat. So we really did a lot of research on that to find out why it was a colt, colt uh, not being a full-grown donkey. So it was a colt and its mother, and, and why did we have to pick one that was never ridden? And I'm just going to be honest with you, um, I haven't fully finished the study on that and come to a significant conclusion that I can share with you, all right? Loose it and bring it here. And if anybody asks you, why are you stealing my donkey, right? Why are you loosing it? Tell them, because the Lord needs of it. Now, I'm just telling you right now, someone walks into the back parking lot and gets into my pickup truck and says, no, no, it's okay. The Lord needs it. We might have some problems with you taking my pickup truck. I mean, literally, let's, can we think about this for a second? Jesus literally told them to go steal it. And it will be okay. Did he not? Yes, he did. We got to read it. It's fact. The Lord needed of it. So those who went, they found the cult that he was talking about. But as they were loosing the cult, the owner said to them, Yo, stick him up. Why are you stealing my donkey? Why are you stealing my donkey? And they said to him, the Lord needs of it. The Lord needs of it. Then they brought, him to Jesus, brought it to Jesus, and they threw their clothes on the colt, and Jesus sat on it. And, and as he went, many spread their clothes on the road. Now, we're reading one of the Gospels. We're reading this in Luke, which is, a synoptic gospel. Mark was probably the first uh, gospel ever written, and then the other others kind of piggybacked off of what Mark wrote. Mark and Matthew both say that they laid their clothes and olive branches on the road. Watch this. Now as he drew near the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude in his house began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all his mighty works. And they had seen, and they shouted, Hosanna! Blessed is the king 
Listen, blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Say that with me. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Okay, now let's think about that. Blessed is the what? King. We got to remember that word. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees called out to Jesus from the crowd, teacher, rebuke your disciples. But he answered them and said back to those Pharisees, I tell you that if these people would keep silent, even the stones would cry out. That's one of those things like if you can't worship, if you can't worship God, I'm going to tell you, even the rocks are going to cry out and worship. And I'll tell you this, there ain't no, there ain't no pebble that's going to worship for me. There ain't no stone that's going to worship for me. Come on, somebody. So let's ask a few questions, okay? Matthew and Mark said that the crowd laid palm branches. Matthew and Mark said that they laid their clothes and palm branches on the street. Why? Why would they do that? Now we're going to get some history, okay? And I'm going to try to make this brief because I know that we have our kids. Why would they put palm branches on the street? In that day, if a political figure entered through the gate of the city, riding on a donkey or riding on a horse, it symbolized their power and authority. If anybody else was riding a donkey or a horse, and they came to that city gate, they had to dismount and walk their donkey or their animal through the gate. They were not allowed to ride on it through the gate. Only politicians, only royalty, only someone of stature could come in through those city gates riding on their animal. And it says that Jesus rode in. He rode in on this colt through the city gate. Immediately, he's somebody important. Immediately, he's either a politician, or he's rich, or he's a king, he's a ruler. Immediately, because he's riding in. So this symbolizes Jesus' kingship. His kingship. So what did they do to a king? What did they do to high-ranking politicians? They would take off their garment, they would lay it down. They would take palm branches and they would lay it down. Kind of like chivalry, how, how chivalry used to be. I mean, I know that nobody actually does this today, but we used to see videos of a guy, he would take off his, his coat and he would put it on a mud puddle. Why would you put your coat on a mud puddle for? Right? But so that, so that the woman's shoe doesn't get messed up as she was, right? Chivalry. It was that honor, that respect. So they took their cloak, their outer garment off, and they would take palm branches and they would put it down because the ki a king was coming in. They believed that Jesus was going to be the king of the Jews, that he was going to be the Messiah, the one that was going to come in and fix the Roman governmental problems. They believed that they were witnessing. Yes, Hosanna. They believed that they were witnessing the one who would overthrow Roman rule. But why a donkey? You guys are a little slow on the Hosanna. I got to admit. Because I know when you're supposed to say it. Why a donkey? Almost done. Why a donkey? In those days, if a king rode in on a donkey, it represented peace. It represented peace. Now let's go back and remember what the crowd said. The crowd said, blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord, right? Blessed is the king. So they're worshiping a king. Therefore, palm branches. Therefore, clothes. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Because he's on a donkey. The donkey represents that he's coming in peace. He's coming to bring peace. Riding in on the, the so you had the prince of peace riding on the animal of peace coming into a city called Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, meaning city of peace. It was a triple peace package rolling into the city. 
They're like, yes, finally no war. We're going to be able to live in peace. No more slavery. None of these things. The prince of peace riding on an animal of peace to the city of peace. But why not a horse? Horses are so much more majestic. If Jesus would have rode in on a horse, a king riding a horse symbolizes war. War. And that is not what Jesus was coming to do. Remember, when the angel of the Lord appeared to the shepherds out in their field, watching their flocks by night, the angel said, peace, good will toward men. It's been the mission of God. It's been the mission of God to let us all know that God's not mad at you. God wants peace in your life. He wants joy in your life. He wants rest in your life. If you ever come to God or come to a church and, and someone's telling you that God is angry at your behavior, you got to remember that when he came to this earth, he said, peace. Peace on earth. Good word to me. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world, he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For Jesus did not come into the world to condemn the world but that the world might be free through him. Luke 2.14 says, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. On the flip side, Revelation 19 says this, Now I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and he who sat on it was called faithful and true. We're talking about Christ. In righteousness, he judges and makes war. Listen, there is going to be a time that Jesus is going to be riding on a horse. And when he rides on a horse, war is going to happen. Some stuff's going to happen. But right now, we're in peace. We are in the peace of God. Okay? So here's what happens. Here's what happened. This is the whole scene. The people believed that Jesus was going to be the conquering king that was going to save them. He was going to be the conquering king that was going to overthrow the Roman government, and he was going to be, bring peace on earth. He was the Messiah in the flesh, so they worshipped him as a king. Hosanna. Hosanna. He who comes in the name of the Lord, the king of kings, the Lord of lords. They put the palm branches down, symbolizing his kingship. He said that they would say out to him, son of David. Which David? King David, King David, Jesus is a descendant of the house of David who was a king. But can we be for real? Once they saw him captured, tortured, and hung on the cross, they all knew they got it wrong. Even the disciples, even the ones that traveled for three years, they were like, we got it wrong, dude. We got it wrong. So they did not immediately go back to their jobs, but they all went into a house and they hid. They hid. Because they didn't want to be next. Kind of gave up. Mm. So Jesus is brought before Pontius Pilate. Pontius Pilate, you, you, you're not ready for this one. You're not ready for this, this note, ready? They bring Jesus before Pontius Pilate. Pontius Pilate says, I find no fault in this man. I find no fault in him. So he says, we're going to let the people decide. Do you guys want to free Jesus or do you want to free Barabbas? You would think, wouldn't you? You would think. But the people wanted a political rebel. This whole thing's political. They want change. So they don't shout out for Jesus because obviously he's a fraud. They said, they shout out, free Barabbas, because Barabbas was a political rebel. Barabbas participated in political insurrection. He was, he was dirty, but at least he was fighting the man. At least he was going against the system. He was corrupt. He was corrupt. He was in prison because of this, but that's what the people wanted. So Pilate sat back and said, okay, if this is what the people want, this is what the people get. He was the wanted politician that the people wanted. They wanted war. 
They wanted insurrection. They didn't want peace. So they said, crucify Jesus, the fraud, and free the politician. This is the beginning of Holy Week. This is what it looked like. Jesus, on Sunday, Jesus rode into Jerusalem on a donkey, palm breaks, all that happened Sunday. By Friday, he's dead. By Friday, he's dead. In that time, <laughs> it's funny, it's funny too because I didn't really realize the, the order until I really started studying it. Jesus rides into Jerusalem on the donkey and I'm, I can only imagine he's already feeling some sort of way because he knows what the week is going to end like. That's when he flips over the money changer table. It's right after this. It's the very next story. So he's already feeling some sort of way. He's like, forget you know, if I'm going out, I'm taking people with me. <laughs> Here's your table, right? But listen, I'm just saying, he's a little salty. Jesus is walking down the street. He's hungry. So he walks up to a fig tree so he can pull off a fig to eat it. Fig tree ain't got no figs on it. What good is a fig tree without figs? So he curses it, and the tree dies. He says, what good is a fig tree if it can't produce any fruit? So, and I know that we can, we can create all types and shadows of what that story means and that you need to produce fruit in your life. And I get all that. But if you look at when he did it, it's because this is an emotional week. There's something going on in this week that, that, that maybe on another day he wouldn't have cursed that tree. But this week he did. This week he did. I'm just saying, got to read the Bible with big eyes. With big eyes. This is Holy Week. During this week, he cursed the fig tree. He turns over the tables. He hosts a dinner party called the Last Supper where we have communion. He was betrayed by Judas. Betrayed by one of the 12 closest people to him. Next week, I'm setting you up for this. Next week, we have an amazing performance by our, our, our worship team and some volunteers, that we are actually gonna look at the Easter story. We're gonna look at the crucifixion story through the lenses of Judas. Through the lenses of Judas. And I'm gonna give you the punchline away. Can I tell them the punchline? Yeah? Does it help or does it hurt us? Don't tell them the punchline. No, because it throws it all away? Okay, never mind. I'm not allowed to tell you the punchline. You will have to come next week to get the punchline. But I'm going to tell you this. You do not, you do not want to miss next Sunday. I would even encourage you. Uh, it's not going to be overtly, um, it's not going to be overtly spiritual. And, and when I say that, yes, we're, it's always spiritual because it's the Lord's house. But if you had somebody who was kind of like new to the faith or trying to figure out if, if the church thing was for them or Christianity was for them, the performance will actually be a really, really gr soft gateway into Christianity and what we believe. And then we're going to kind of come on the backside and hit the punchline as to what we're seeing through the lenses of Judas. Why Judas did what he did. What happened throughout that week? What happened in that time? What happened with Judas? Um, we've, we've, we've looked at Peter before. Why did Peter deny Christ? Is there a difference between denial and betrayal? We're going to look at it next week. You don't want to miss next Sunday. But for you, but for today, is he your Hosanna? Is he your Prince of Peace? Is he the Prince of Peace riding on peace in a city of peace? Is he your, is he your triple threat peace? In your life, if you're not experiencing peace, it might be because you're devoid of the Prince of Peace. And I'm going to tell you next week, next week, if, if you're searching, if you're in need of more peace, next week's going to be that week that you're going to want to jump right in. Amen? Love you guys. Thank you for watching today's message. My name is Ashley, and if this message has made an impact in your life in any way, I'd like to ask you to do a couple of things. 
first, we want you to like and subscribe to our channel and join us right here every Sunday at 9.30 a.m. or 11.30 a.m. The next thing I'm gonna ask you to do is take a next step on your journey, and we would love to help you do that. You can head on over to FamilyChurchNY.com or email us at team at FamilyChurchNY.com to get started today.